I wish you a good evening on this Monday, Thursday. Like you, I wish we could be together for worship tonight. But since we cannot, I am very happy to welcome you into the Hopkins home virtually. As we advertised earlier this week, tonight you're going to have the opportunity to take Holy Communion. Your elements do not have to be crackers and grape juice. They can be bread and water. They can be bagels and milk, whatever you have. What matters is not what we use as elements. What matters is what they represent because of what Christ has done for us. If you need to get something to use as communion elements, now would be a good time to pause the video and do that. Our scripture this evening comes from the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, some of the events from that first Monday, Thursday, beginning at verse 32. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and anxious. He said to them, my soul is deeply grieved, even to death. Stay here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, and yet let your will be done, not mine. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you stay awake one hour? Stay awake and pray that you might not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again, he came and found them sleeping because their eyes were very heavy. They didn't know what to say to him. He came to them a third time and said, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's go. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is the word of God. For our time, and our lives. Thanks be to God. It is Monday, Thursday. Tonight begins the passion of Jesus. Tonight, he is betrayed, arrested, denied, and completely abandoned. And in the midst of all of that, Jesus prays repeatedly. That seems instructive for us, doesn't it? In a time of crisis and isolation, Jesus repeatedly turns to prayer and to God. He's honest with God about his feelings, including his misgivings, which we certainly can do as well. It's appropriate for us in this unusual and stressful time to express to God our concerns and anxieties and fears. But the final word in Jesus' prayer is a word of trust. To pray, your will be done, is to say, I trust in your will because I trust in your goodness and love. Actually, this is not the first time Jesus has prayed, your will be done. Think about the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That was at the very outset of Jesus' public ministry in his first public sermon. It was a time of great anticipation, a time of announcing and beginning to build the kingdom of God. What could be more exciting and hopeful? In that context, surrounded by supporters, Jesus prays, your will be done. 
now, on Monday, Thursday, alone, in the dark, at the end, Jesus prays the very same prayer. How can we do that? How can we work toward a trust in God and a faithfulness to God which are not contingent on circumstances? Are you familiar with the Borden Dairy Company, Borden Mill, Borden Ice Cream? In reading about that company's history, I learned about William Borden. When William Borden graduated from high school in Chicago in 1904, he became heir to the Borden estate, which made him a millionaire. His gift for his high school graduation present from his parents was a trip around the world, exactly what Carol and I gave our children. As William traveled around the world, his heart became burdened for all of the poor and hurting people he saw. He wrote his parents and told them that he was coming home to prepare for the mission field. At that time, William wrote two words in the back of his Bible, no reserves. He came home and enrolled in Yale University. While a student at Yale, he began organizing student Bible studies. By his senior year, 1,000 of Yale's 1,300 students was involved in a Bible study. When he graduated from Yale, William wrote two more words in the back of his Bible, no retreats. After college, he went to seminary. After seminary, he went to language school in Egypt. In Egypt, he contracted spinal meningitis William Borden died in Egypt at the age of 25. But before he died, he wrote two more words in the back of his Bible. No regrets. Here is a way that you and I can pray toward and work toward a faith and faithfulness which are not contingent on circumstances. No reserves. I will not hold back anything from God. No retreats. Once I am on the path that God wants for my life, I will not turn back. And no regrets. Whatever happens, I trust God. What do you think? No holding back, no turning back. Whatever happens, we trust God. Surely this is the very trust and faithfulness that Jesus' disciples saw in him, including when he gathered them in the upper room on the first Monday, Thursday. During supper, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this is a new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, thank you for the amazing and sacrificial love you have shown us in Jesus Christ. Tonight our prayer is, 
that our gratitude for that love would keep us from holding back when there are so many people who need our kindness and generosity and encouragement. We pray that our gratitude for your love would keep us from turning back from the path that would lead to you. Most of all, we pray that our gratitude for your love would cause us in whatever happens to trust you. This is our prayer in the name of the one who gave himself completely to faith and faithfulness. Amen. Tomorrow, you will be receiving a Good Friday devotion comprised entirely of art and music. I hope you will look forward to that. Until then, and until Easter, may the grace and peace of our Lord be with you and yours. Amen.